darkness, my old friend. Do you like your barely 3D video game horror films all low scored up with poorly rendered CGI, ugly production design, phoned in performances, one scene cameos, and actress Carrie Ann Moss decked out like a pale Meryl Streep who's suffering from a severe vitamin D deficiency? We've got all that and much, much more with Silent Hill Revelation. And before we flush it, we're going to take it out and play with it a little. Within the sound of silence. We're here to flush it, so you don't have to see it. <laughs> Greetings, everyone. I am on tonight, your head cinematic flusher right here in the restroom. As always, I'm joined by my lovely co-cinematic flushers, Midwest movie mogul, Colleen Griffin. Hey, hey, hey. And raging Buddha B-movie queen, Nora Crest. What's up? Our special guests this time out are YouTubers for a show called Low Score. Low Score essentially does for crappy video games what we do for crappy films here in the restroom. You can follow all of their video game rantings over at the Torture Vision channel on YouTube. Please welcome hosts Brandon Hayes and Anthony Dinar. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Short and sweet. Huh? It's always awkward the first time you say hi because you're like, should I say it like that? Is that right? <laughs> Every time Raging Buddha Beam Movie Queen Nora Crest spends some time in our stall and reads the writing on the restroom wall, she's never quite the same. Let's see who turns up in this week's Raging Buddha Stats. I'm Nora Crest, and these are the stats for Silent Hill Revelation 3D. This sequel to the wildly unpopular Silent Hill took six years and $20 million to produce. And don't worry your pretty little PETA heads off about those goldfish dying in the film. They were just drugged, so they would fall asleep. Isn't that better? Kit Harrington is apparently contractually obligated to appear in some sort of a quote-unquote son role to Sean Bean. Technically, Silent Hill Revelations did kill Sean Bean in the opening five minutes, even though it was just a dream. In Japan, to market the film, Konami, they of course released a special ramen to tie in with the film because nothing says psychopathic demon like ramen. I'm Nora Crest, and these are the stats. Film should have been called either Shitty Movie is Coming or Silent Hell No. <laughs> <laughs> you think black people thought this movie was bullshit as well? Why does it have to be racial? Yeah, why, why is it have to bring <laughs> that into it? Like race conversation <laughs> about a shitty horror movie. No I, black people even die in this movie. No, like, know, <laughs> well, they were in Detroit. It's kind of yeah. odd that there, there was wasn't no black a black people. person. Well, you know, I, I never just... knew Detroit looked so much like upstate New York. They filmed in Ontario. So Ontario oh, just looks really? like everywhere. Well, that town, the whole town looked like Flint, Michigan. Uh, but I'm just thinking, like, there's a certain demographic that really enjoys these type of films. I think they were, if they weren't yelling back, they were probably yelling back at the screen to turn it off. I don't, I don't think that demographic has really been that many other places outside, you know, their mother's basement. So. No, oh. And no, not the video game demographic. That's great for making fun of our two guests right off well, the bat. Well, no, I'm just saying, <laughs> hey, guess what, Honor? There are different kinds of demographics in the video game market. You guys aren't in your basement, right? Maybe you are. I don't know. Maybe this... we are. Okay. <laughs> don't reveal their secret fortress, Honor. What's the matter with you? I don't know. It's almost our bedtime. Mom's getting kind of... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Were all the Silent Hill games this boring? That's my first question, I guess, for you two gentlemen. I played, I think, the first one ages ago. We played the first one all the way through because, like, neither of us have ever played any of them in the series. And we were like, what's all the hype about? <laughs> they made a fucking movie, two of them, off of this shit. And we started playing it, and uh, there's no plot in it, just like the movie. <laughs> Basically, like the movie, you're just wandering around in like a total nightmare fest carnival well, shitstorm, and then there's just blood and weird shit. And it was the carnival in the first one or the second one? I don't even know if there was a carnival in the first. Well, one. and you know what? The, the carnival right. reminded me of that dilapidated, like demented carnival from the Care Bears movie. Yeah, we're gonna talk. Can yeah, I just say something? Don't all scary movies at some point end up at a fucking fucked up carnival? <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah. Isn't that just like when they're writing these things? They're like, where are we sticking the carnival? Should we put it? 
it in the middle? Does it go at the end? Well, Where do well, we end up? Speaking of uh, playing the game, uh, uh, according to IMDb, uh, Kit Harrington admitted to trying to play the game for research, but he said he got too scared. <laughs> But I'm he, sure he, he tried to play the game, but like he told his publicist that it sucked, and his publicist <laughs> was like, "Whoa, was we like, can't oh, say that." <laughs> too scary. There's a uh, 3D bad, and then there's CGI 3D bad. Crest does VFX, and bad. they don't do any practical 3D. It's all created in the computer. I think it was an add-on after the movie was done. We're like, well, well I this- think it was. They definitely did a combination. I mean, obviously, I didn't watch it in 3D. I was watching no, it. We didn't. None of us watch it in 3D. Right. But the thing that bugs me about 3D movies in general is the cheap shit that you know is just in there for the 3D audience, which is just yeah. lame for the the majority of people who don't watch the shit in 3D. Right. So when things are coming at you, like the double mouth thing and all this stuff, it's just like, oh god. Yeah, but it's, it's badly composited CGI. Oh, all the CGI terrible. is terrible. Well, apparently oh. it doesn't have to be good. It's coming at your face. You're gonna close your eyes anyway. So you're not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hopefully for the entire film. Uh, was anyone else waiting? Uh, well, no, I'm gonna mention that. Was anyone else waiting with bated breath for the last uh, first? Uh, try again. Uh, who the hell was wait six years for this sequel? I guess that's my. I chunk it out of my mouth here. I, I, the, yeah, because there was a six-year gap, and usually, you know, the, the cutoff's five years for any relevant sequel. I mean, even my baby sister, who is, like, loves horror and shit, she's read every Stephen King book three times, she didn't even see it. She's like, oh, I didn't see that one. I was like, yeah. really? Nobody okay, saw it. this yeah, tells me struck how struck when the iron was hot. These films came out way after the games, though, right? These were years past the game release. Well, they're still releasing the oh, games, are they? though. Yeah. Well, what's yeah, they're at, like, 13, oh, I think. 13? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I'm just guessing. Come on. Who do they think they are? World of Warcraft? Yeah, how many times? <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then we know how that turned out. How many times could you visit the same shitty carnival and get covered in ash? I mean, I think after like <laughs> two or three games, I think you got to wrap it up, right, gentlemen? I mean, Jesus Christ. Uh, bombing alarm siren heard before the title credit is your signal that this film is going to suck and you should take cover right now. <laughs> I thought that was the fire alarm to leave the auditorium. No, the theater, yeah. <laughs> That's the only time it's acceptable to yell fire in a crowded room. Do not go to Silent Hill. A uh, film opens like an old Anthrax video featuring an off-the-shelf carnival nightmare sequence involving some leftover Hellraiser production design and some of the worst CGI ever done in a film with a $20 million budget. Right at the two-minute mark, guys. They claimed a lot of it was practical effects. And, okay, um, like saran wrap around... Carnival figures does not count as a practice. <laughs> and I've seen that pyramid head cosplay at so many uh, conventions now. The character has lost any effectiveness he might have had at a three-minute mark. Even if you don't know Silent Hill, you know that guy with that stupid fucking triangle on his head. Yeah, can yeah. someone explain yeah, like, to me what that triangle is supposed to be? Yeah, that's a great no. question. It's never explained, even in the games and these two movies. We don't know. He's a protector, I think, of... He's the guardian. Yeah, he's a guardian, but well, how is that looking like? Like, he literally got a toaster on his head. I mean, it doesn't... It, doesn't, <laughs> it looks like they took that scene from Beetlejuice, you know, when they stretched their face yeah. all out yeah. and just made it out of steel. I feel sorry for that poor actor who's got to be stuffed inside that thing for 18 hours a day. Oh, and the, like, you know, the huge layer of fake skin that he has to have on with all the oh, cuts. Yeah. He, he can't it's breathe. Well, can't does breathe. anybody think that this might be the actualization of New York's hottest club, as described <laughs> by Stefan? <laughs> the bouncer's a... name is Jack Dickelson. Ten bucks says this whole sequence was stolen from a Kiss a Psycho Circus concept album, so I managed to work that in. Uh, yeah, you guys played the video game, so this is really not too far off the mark from that, because uh, it doesn't make a whole hell of a lot of sense. But it's a dream sequence for something that is going to happen later. Unfortunately, we're going to have to go back to this awful looking place. Uh, the dreams will fade. Uh, perpetually killed off in a film. Sean Bean shows up around the four minute mark, and not surprisingly, is uh, killed off in this lame. Dream within a dream moment. He's killed immediately. Well, but it, it's a dream. It's kind of a cheat. So like an inception count? moment. Too. It was does a CGI kill. Just so does it count? Oh, and that was the worst. I'm sorry. That was like was 3D a tar- No, that was 8-bit like CGI. Say it was an 8-bit CGI. <laughs> yeah. I think we're going to count it, though, that they killed him in this movie just for that scene. Okay. I don't think he's allowed to do movies unless he's murdered in some way. <laughs> exactly. No, pixels, pixels. <laughs> Yeah, he does live in Pixels. I don't know why. Oh. He was in Pixels? Yeah, he's in Pixels. Yes. Wow. You guys do a show about video games. I don't understand why you guys don't watch all the video game movies. Isn't that Okay, right? that doesn't that's count. That's they that's have that's a life. life. Well, we don't know that. We listen to little... All I hear them do is buy <laughs> shitty video games and review it and then complain about buying I, shitty I wouldn't video even games. Let my kids <laughs> I, I don't know where the, where we're going to draw the line on these guys, okay? so Okay, maybe... I pay for some of these movies, so... <laughs> 
and then I complain about them. That's true. Well, we do this. How thing. different is that? It's, and we I, probably only so pay about the same amount of money with our mom's allowance <laughs> here in the basement. So <laughs> your mom drops you off at GameStop. Stop. Yeah, right. <laughs> lets you go to Sbarro. Yeah. And then picks you up. <laughs> Rough night. Uh, Jesus, if you're having horrific dreams like this chick, uh, get a prescription and knock yourself out at night. Man, she had, like, that was the opening sequence, was a dream sequence involving the, the carnival nightmare. Does anybody have these dreams? As a PTSD sufferer, I can say that I have had pretty shitty dreams. Yeah, but not CGI yeah. shitty. <laughs> what? Well, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I could have written a better script from some of my dreams. Uh, yeah. Uh, and the woman we're talking about, the actress's name is Adelaide Clemens. We'll talk about her. Is not, she, is, not, Ms. Yeah, not Michelle Williams. No, She's not, the Australian Michelle Williams. I don't want to wait. So <laughs> her and her father, Sean Bean, are on the run because Sean Bean was in the first one. And she's the daughter of the lead character, Rada Mitchell, who's going to be here in one second. Um, and they escaped the first time, and he's, he's keeping her hidden because she's very valuable to the people of Silent Hill. We'll get to that. Why can't you come back? Well, because Rada Mitchell didn't want to be in another shitty Silent Hill film. Duh, nine minimum. <laughs> she she is her. in this film. She, she does. She, yeah, she was she asking for C's that film. Rada Mitchell money. They, and they must have paid it. Uh, that was more where most of the budget was. They must have paid her a lot of money to come back because she didn't want to come back for this. I'm sure that was cutting room floor stuff. They just sweeped off the first film. Probably. Oh, you think that was not? <laughs> <laughs> she looked like she was doing another movie when she appeared on camera. She was just between, <laughs> between shots. No, no, no. Like, or she did, like, she did a perfume commercial in Japan. <laughs> they spliced the footage and just used it for this. <laughs> over and over again, yeah. Don't go. Uh, this is, and I said that great. I said, this is a, some of the finest Sean Bean mirror acting that a $20 million budget can buy. <laughs> minute mark. And his American accent. He's on lithium for most of this movie. Oh you know. I, apparently, there were no Americans who wanted to be in this film. Right? So they That's just, like... Too. He did his best Liam Neeson in American accent. For Why don't you just get Canadians? Like, don't go, eh? <laughs> 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 That would have been nobody, a nobody wants to see Jigarasi, the horror film. <laughs> oh, take off from Silent Hill. Eh? I mean, they could have just got Drake, and he could have been the dad. I was starting to think I don't that, know like, who Game this... of Thrones was a fluke. Like, <laughs> yeah, I think he was a good no. actor. Yeah. And then... yeah. Where's Mommy? Uh, she's gone now, honey. Uh, she was the only smart one in this uh, two-film franchise. Her appearance <laughs> is uh, one of the two one-scene cameos in this mess. Uh, she appears one more time later on, and that's it for her. Uh, she's in and out. Spoiler alert, guys. Do I know you? A live action Inspector Gadget shows up around the 11 minute mark looking uh, <laughs> looking <laughs> slightly more functional version of the homeless man lying I next to him on the street. He deserves better. A go go alcoholic. Can I can I just say though <laughs> the scene would have been so much better if he would have like, you know, started approaching her and she just yelled stranger danger and like <laughs> ran from it. <laughs> They move to a new town because they have to keep moving around and because there's, there's a group looking for them. And she has to go to a new high school and she's on her way there and she's accosted by uh, Mr. Inspector Gadget here. I don't think there are too many original thinkers here in this room or working on this film for that. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was her shout out to the writers. I think it was. The, writers... the main writer was also the director. OK, the, the director was Michael J. Bassett. The first yeah. trivia note is Michael J. Bassett was dissatisfied with this film. You, you think? <laughs> he only wrote and directed it. I guess he pissed off. What, what would have happened if he was satisfied? I don't think right. I want to. See <laughs> oh, apparently there is a director's cut. Uh, the film he did before this was a film called Solomon Kane, which was based on a comic book, a comic or character. No, he's actually based on an old uh, H. Ryder Haggard character. I believe the guy who did Conan. That was actually and James Purfoy played uh, Solomon Kane. That was actually pretty decent. I've actually seen that too. It's kind of like Underworld. Yeah, it's, but it's a little, it's, yeah, at least Purfoy was entertaining, I guess, but more so than anybody else in this film. But I don't know what, like between that and this film, there's a big disconnect because obviously he had at least some style in that film. Here, uh, I don't know if he was just hired as a quick cash grab. I don't know. I don't even know how they end up getting 20 million, but that's where maybe we're asking too many questions. Uh, are you kidding me? I can't follow that. Uh, Game of Thrones, uh, Kit Harrington shows up around the 13 minute mark, decked out in a Salvation Army leather jacket, and it makes him look like the homeless is coming. Uh, <laughs> ah, hey -o. Be here all week. <laughs> no, it makes them look like leather is coming. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's a crappy jacket. They couldn't again. They never spend any money on the wardrobe on these films. Chris, we've talked about this. I talked about this truck rolling up, and I guess somewhere in Ontario, there's a wardrobe truck that just rolls up to these shitty movies. <laughs> And just starts pulling stuff out the back. But uh, that jacket is so terrible. Jacket, who, jacket. who would be excited about that? And it's not even in 3D. It's just a 2D jacket on him. <laughs> Speaking of excited, we, like the, the, the Gap vest that she gets from Dad. 
that's yeah, even, that's not early even, oh, it's like that, forever yeah. 21 bullshit. Is that what that is? A forever 21? It's got, yeah, definitely. Oh, I, well, oh, I, yeah, I was in Gap High School, and we definitely sold that back. <laughs> Oh, ah, shit. Uh, when electricity crackles in a horror film, you know you're in trouble. Either that or there's an actual wiring problem that should be looked at ASAP. 14 minute yeah, mark. You know what? I all these films have the same thing. It, yeah, all these films have the same damn thing. They always have this electric start to flicker and go out and you hear the crackle in the there's back. A, there's well, a checklist of bullshit. Power <laughs> outage. All scares. Creepy hand from behind. <laughs> Carnival, creepy clown. Is that a mandatory <laughs> checklist that we have to do I for all these so. crap films? I'm tired of seeing that. that I deal. haven't it's seen an original horror film in I don't know how long. Uh, and that was in the game, right, guys? Didn't the electricity crackle? And I guess you guys It was know. very hard to see anything in oh, the well, game. <laughs> very dark. That's how they saved money on the animation in the game. They just yeah. Yeah. Like Turn your monitor up, like the brightness level, because I think I when I actually played the original one, I had to do that. Because yeah, you yeah, you do. But, yeah. like, the system itself can't handle the graphics, oh, and that's why they added the fog. So <laughs> it was like a cop-out. <laughs> Silent Hill High School Quarter looks more like the Incredible Hulk lit a fart than it does a convincing production design. 15-minute mark. That burned-out hallway where she first flicks out with the electric flickers, and then you see her in this burned-out, uh, terrible production design um, for Canadians. They should know better. Um, then you just, you know, build a set. Well, and they only had $20 million dollars. So, you know, there's only well, so much you can do. They use, they use that as part of the marketing campaign because apparently Konami's marketing campaign in Japan had a specific ramen flavor for this film. You're kidding. No. Why did you... flavor? What? <laughs> I know, right? Why don't you guys know that? You're the video game experts. What the hell, man? I'm not <laughs> eating anything that tastes like Silent Hill. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you're exactly right. You know what? I'm lost. Uh, you're a long way from Westeros, Jon Snow. <laughs> Long yeah. way. Isn't it just so obvious that he is like super creeptastic? He's just like staring at her. He's following her ever. Yes. It's you know, and she's more scared of Inspector Gadget than she is of this stalkerazzi. Well, my point on See, this on him sense. though in this opening scene, I thought it was amazing the hair team actually got any work after this mess, considering how flat his line delivery is in every scene. He's like wooden snow. He doesn't have to deliver anything anyway. You're just looking at him. That's the whole point of Kid yeah. Harrington. He's, he's actually improved as an actor, I think. He's eye candy. I think there's someone following me. What do I do? Well, you find the gadget copter before he does. <laughs> uh, minute mark. That's the, uh, yeah, the, inspector, the homeless inspector gadget guy he keeps following this girl around. We'll find out about him in a few minutes. Uh, but he keeps trailing uh, the poor daughter uh, around the uh, town of um, Ontario. The birthday party clown around the 18 minute mark, guys, is easily the scariest image in this film. I mean, are you say something? She's like, I'll meet you at the Happy Burger. What? Why is it filled with creeptastic clowns and she's in like exactly. an indoor mini carnival well, hell? I'm not sure what's worse, what? guys. Hiring a clown for your child's birthday or having it in a food court of a fucking mall. Right? How cheap is that? Like, I'm a, how shitty of a parent? I don't know if your parents did that. Maybe you guys just got back from that. I don't know. I'm pretty cheap, <laughs> and I wouldn't. I'm cheap as a parent. I wouldn't do that. I, in a yeah, food I'm pretty court. cheap too, but I still would take him to a Chuck E. Cheese. I don't think I would have it in a food court of a mall. It's, it's, What's the difference between Chuck E. Cheese and a food court of a mall? Aesthetics. So you got video games and you got that stupid mouse in a suit and shit. You don't have that crap in them. You got you to. The clown is probably a pedophile. Just happened to be there on the same day. No, he's part of Happy Burger. <laughs> Uh, flesh cooking in that Silent Hill verse kitchen is accurate for a, oh. a mall food court. There you go. Usually it's an Asian vendor who handles that part of it. Oh, oh you had to make it racist. <laughs> that's not racist. Have you, have you that eaten? Is, oh, that's really? not racist. I don't know. I've eaten at some of those. It's right. mall food. It's mall right. food in general. <laughs> 19 minute mark, folks. Well, maybe it's the Brazilian one. I don't know. I, you know, oh, I, God, why does it have to be ethnic? I, I, well, I, have you been to a food court? It's all yeah. ethnic. And it's yes, all, all different ethnicities. All right. It's been... all terrible mystery. It's all white pimply kids behind the counter. I don't care what kind of food <laughs> they are. It's, uh, it's these two guys on the weekend. You guys are working. <laughs> <laughs> They're working at the hot dog on a stick. <laughs> pumping, pumping that lemonade. So anyway, they, what happens is they're at the food court. She twitches out, and now she's in the Silent Hill world, I guess. It's not the full Silent Hill town. It's just the world that kind of tweaks out. We're not sure exactly what's happening. but well, there's She's no like crossing over. Town. It just appears and then disappears. It's not like she went anywhere. It came to her. Yeah. Remember, she's in the hallway of the school, and it's all freaked out, and then K 
Kit Harrington grabs her shoulder and all of a sudden everything's fine. Yeah, but Cress, is it visions or is she actually there? That's what I want to know. It's like, is she, I, so- well, according to the granddad, according to the one line explanation of reality that you would get during the bus ride later, <laughs> there are layers of reality and they're all intersecting. Oh, that doesn't so, mean that, as many layers as the main characters were. That sounds like a Doctor <laughs> Who episode. That's like something Doctor Who would say. But that's, I mean, that's the explanation is that she's having a hard time staying in one reality. Okay. But they, everyone says, movies. don't go to Silent Hill. It's, it know. seems like she doesn't have a choice. The movie should have been called Don't Go to Silent Hill. Because that's <laughs> line. Who are you, Inspector Gadget? Uh, duh, 20-minute mark. I, I guess it doesn't. So the Again? Guy, yeah, well, the guy, the homeless gadget guy's still following her, uh, Griff. Well, yeah, we got to through the mall now. We're in the kitchen of the... Of but the now he's calling her Sharon. Uh, the oh, seat, Sharon! You know, they're trying to escape uh, some guy, something that's chasing them. This weird uh, Cenobite that's chasing them. Uh, the seat, yeah, exactly. The seat, yeah, we'll talk about the it. The fact we'll that, that they didn't thing. utilize Ozzy Osbourne for just this role, just so he could run through a mall oh, screen. Or- Sharon! Uh, the CGI finger slicing on the uh, 21 minute mark would probably look just as lame if I watched it in 3D. I'm guessing that was pretty terrible. Again, really bad stuff, 3D CGI. Because what's his name? Inspector Gadget gets his hand, his fingers cut off of his one hand. Uh, at least the Dizzians of Silent Hill are uh, cost conscious as they keep turning off the lights to save energy. I thought that was actually pretty nice, though, right? <laughs> you don't think about stuff like that, but maybe they're like, hey, you know, all this all this interdimensional stuff costs money. You know, fucking turn yeah, the I mean, lights off. How does a demonic possessed town pay its power bills? Where does that go to? Yeah, where is? Yeah, where are they getting the funds for this? You know, that carnival just lights right up. I mean, how did, you know, did PG&E drive out there and was like, wow, well, these guys are starting up that crazy demonic carnival again. We got to get got, the wiring straight. You got you know. uh, Pyramid Head sitting there cranking the generator in the center. Right? Oh, I forgot it's about the him. Crank, it's the crank like Kimmy Schmidt. Uh, uh, wonder if actress uh, Adelaide Clemens had to pass a fitness test since she spends most of the film running through various locations. That's all she was doing is running down a hall. Well, what, at least she ran when she should have been running. She didn't just like slowly walk and wander. She ran. She was like, uh, I got to get out of here. She should have been running back to her trailer. Been called well, she was, it was young. one she was like her agent. Go ahead. Backwards she was, she, like crab crawl. That was bullshit. <laughs> what was that? Was that her? I believe it was the girl. Yes. It, it, it was, it was, it was ridiculous, yeah. but it's still like leaps and bounds ahead of the first movie there was actually like a bad guy who was shot in this film like that's a hundred percent of increase since the first film oh really oh, uh, the yeah. first film was just the main character running around seeing some enemy from the video game and then running away yeah <laughs> this is like i swear to god her script must have just looked like say where am i and then huff and puff <laughs> <laughs> and then scream really loud wow. and now run like that just must have been on every third page of yeah her script because that's all she was doing i was like good lord this girl's gonna hyperventilate i hope they had emts oh, on this I, I hope they did she ran a lot she did run a lot she ran a lot but it wasn't even the running it was yeah well well with all that fog blowing oh, around she fog, probably the ash, yeah, the all... falling ash. during the auditions they just had rows of <laughs> treadmills and they just see who could last the longest <laughs> <laughs> and they had the, all the wires connected yeah. to them, yeah. like monitoring. They all, look like, they all look like Dolph Lundgren in Rocky IV. Just keep going. <laughs> <laughs> Drop. Uh, I have no idea what's going on in my head right now. Just like we have no idea what's going on in this film right now. Hey, oh, <laughs> 24 minute mark. All right, I was a cheap hey, oh. It still counts. Uh, <laughs> do you see them? A bunch of Cenobite cosplayers on that train platform? Yep, 25 <laughs> minute mark. <laughs> all, all the characters are really ripped off from Hellraiser in some yeah. sense. Hellraiser, like, Hellraiser meets Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Oh, which was funny, though. I feel like this movie could be re-edited as a comedy. Yeah, thing. it's got some Benny Hill music in it. Silent Benny Hill. Uh, <laughs> all right, I'll, I'll be here all week. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> where's home? Silent Hill Snow's hair keeps getting bigger with each passing scene. Like, the hairstyle is on a shoot ran on a holding product, and he just said to hell with it. 26-minute mark. When they're on that train, his, he got, he's got big, poofy hair. Too much dry shampoo. Or is that something. what it is? He's got big, poofy... I didn't know he had big, poofy hair. Harrington? Yeah, yeah, he's got the big... Oh, poofy. his hair is... He's out of control. He, uh, he, yeah, he, he obviously looks like don't Joey from shit. Blossom. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's dressed like Joey from Blossom. He oh. is dressed like Joey from Blossom. He's oh my Joey god, that's the best. Oh you should have just been like this the whole movie. 
whoa. Like that. <laughs> he just done that. It would have been great. So we should mention that <laughs> John Snow character, Kit Harrington, is a, is a fellow student that kind of is really has a, has a hard on for this young woman and ends up following her around and listening to her, bu- her crazy bullshit as they're on the train and, and she's moving away from the, the school and whatever else and the, the Inspector Gadget guy at the mall and all this stuff. And he says, and she, well, she, she he wants to get to know her. And she says, I don't think you want to know me. But she's not playing hard to get there, Snow. You really don't want to know her and her Cenobite pals. If a woman says, you know, you don't want to know me, you might want to take that as a hint. I don't know. Like, I don't want to get to know you. I just want to fuck you. What are you talking well, about? All right. <laughs> we're going to be, yes. This kid is 17. You know, I'm a little spoiler here. He's been sent on a mission to bring her back to the town. Right. If I'm a 17 year old that's essentially growing up in an actual hell with fucking demons and hellfire and darkness and shit tearing you apart, and I'm out in the regular world and there's fucking pizza and other shit. Fuck my mission, man. I'm out of there. I'm gonna <laughs> right. like go Amish. do whatever the fuck I want to do. <laughs> How is this? Stuff. I mean, he's like, sitting in this classroom with like normal people. You, he would have been like, exactly. shit, man. You guys have everything. Yeah, you know? You're right. You're absolutely right. Silent Hill Amish. You're right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, basically, <laughs> no, it's Silent Rumspringer. So during this time, while they're away, Sean Bean gets abducted at his own home, and she comes home to find some shit. By written. the nothing. Yeah, right. there's written stuff written on, a bl- on blood on the wall saying you got to come to Silent Hill, and she finds a box of his stupid shit that he had kept from the first movie. And now we have to endure a Sean Bean expositional flashback for everyone who managed to miss both the video games and the first crappy film. Uh, they should have just inserted a video game cutscene instead of having him perform this lame voiceover. Honestly, that would have made more sense, that, right? I don't know what acting was worth. Sean Bean is not a bad actor. Because weren't there cutscenes in the Silent Hill guys? The, the yeah, editing? there were. You couldn't skip, right? You had to watch them? Yeah, but they didn't make sense either, so I can't defend them. <laughs> None of this is clarified, right? No, I'm still confused. Okay, all right. See, I lost count, honestly. I lost count how many times Sean Bean has now said, don't go to Silent Hill. He said it in the dream. He that. said it in real life. Then yeah. he says it in the note. It's like, oh, for Christ's sake. Gotta go to this shitty town. I know, I know. Uh, road closed, uh, probably due to a fire under the bridge from all that effect smoke blowing around. 35 minute mark. Yeah, there's a car that drove over that bridge and just a lot. I guess I think that's CGI, right, Chris? I don't know if that was actual practical for that sequence. Does it matter? I no, mean, it's I, so I, shitty. I know. I know. Does it matter? I, know. Uh, I need rest. Uh, Jon Snow needs rest, so we're going to stay at the scariest motel we can find here. And then <laughs> not sleep. Mark. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But they had two sure. double beds, okay? This is like 1950s hotels. Yeah, but that doesn't exist. Where they is, still like, exist. You can the, still book a double. No, no, no. Where's these hotels exist? They don't exist anymore. Like, that, that shitty... Oh, they exist. Oh, yeah. they exist. Really? That Norman Bates style? Oh, yeah. Because... Not that I've stayed in yeah, one. Yeah, where's it staying at? Yeah, I only take my hookers to the dirty <laughs> hotel. <laughs> <laughs> it's gotta be twenty five dollars for two hours, and then you're out. Only if it's got that flickering no vacancy sign. Yeah, you can have that. That's all your allowance money for the week, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> and you probably have to borrow. From- no, he what? saved up all month for that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm the child of the order. Woo! Exposition is coming. Because <laughs> now Mr. Uh, John Snow has to dump out. Now it turns out he is a child of silent hill and he's been charged with going to bring her back to silent hill right she's yeah and by the way i just realized there's a parallel of this to game of thrones that is really weird the Um, carving the tattoo on the skin right here can can i just say something as a person who has many tattoos fuck that shit no one's (laughs) busting out a fucking knife and carving my skin open and then no Harrington's chest looks like a UFO landed on it. 38 minute mark. They do the, no, in the in Game of Thrones, tattoo. they do that to their foreheads. Oh, is that? Oh, so this uh, order of fucked up monks. Yeah. I just want to like tell everyone that we're all invited to Silent Hill because we've all endured <laughs> enough suffering watching. Right. This. Yeah. <laughs> we all got first class tickets. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe this film is a precursor to Game of Thrones. Maybe this no, all connected. This, this happened Same after world. after Sean Bean had already been killed off. Oh, so they already had the first season, and then oh this, yeah, this oh. was like two seasons, two all or right, three. A little seasons. behind on my okay. All right. Well, it only took forty-two of ninety-five minutes uh, to reach Silent Hill in a film that's called Silent Hill. Well done, 40, <laughs> forty-two minute mark. So Terrible. yeah, we had to wait forty-two minutes uh, just to get to the goddamn town. They keep talking about not going to. Like, it'd be great if the film didn't go there. Wouldn't it be awesome 
If like they just yeah, it would have been not, great. Oh yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Dude, we just never just got, got on a plane and so went to what, Waikiki, and they, they were like the rest it. of the running time just talking and bullshit and drinking. So it awesome. really would have been like Seinfeld, where it's like a horror <laughs> film about nothing. Silent Hill exteriors look about as scary as walking through downtown Flint, Michigan. There you go, on any given day. Uh, but apparently, according to Miss Griffin, Flint, Michigan is far worse. So, oh, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty bad when Silent Hill looks better than most of me, most American cities at this point. Uh, guys, does this look like the video game at all? It's uh, it's pretty, like, filthy. Everything's got a rust color to it, and that's, like, their biggest claim to fame, I guess, is, like, that, and everything's chain-link fence, like, <laughs> floors and walls. <laughs> everything's a basketball court. Everything's like the junkyard from the Sandlot. Did they? Or the <laughs> Did they corner the market on this type of horror genre? Or this is Resident Evil, right? Or this, like Resident Evil and Silent Hill pretty oh, much too. dominated it, yeah. I know the darkness is coming. Silent Hill's transition to evil looks like someone is constantly sandblasting paint off a concrete wall. 47. <laughs> the transition looks really terrible from day to night. Apparently, it looks almost as bad at night than it does during the day, except they just... They blow paint off the walls, and it goes but up. But it's not the daytime, though. It's it the is. darkness. They don't even explain that very no, well. No, they don't explain it, what the darkness is. It's just like at night when, you know, somebody farts and the paint <laughs> fills off the wall. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> no, they tried really hard to make it like... Uh... Zelda for Super Nintendo <laughs> Link to the Past, where it was like oh, okay. Light World and Dark World. They just oh, didn't do a very just... good job. Yeah. Was it the same way in the game, right? It's the same thing happens, right? The, the warning siren goes off and, and the paint starts peeling. The warning siren go off, it would just go dark, and then when you like got back in the game, you were in it. You didn't see a transitional <laughs> Oh, period. like this one, like the paint. They just did like a fucked up loading screen, and then all of a sudden <laughs> you're in the dark part. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was like the Ark of the Covenant, you know, everything <laughs> killed off. Yeah, exactly. CGI mannequin spider around the 51 minute mark is what happens when you spend too much time working in the back room at JC Penney's. I will give it up though. Before <laughs> before you see the the spider mannequin, uh, you see the naked girl. You don't really see her because yeah, they do like the lights, so you don't see her yeah. boobs and stuff. No but more. her turning into a mannequin, that's probably where half of the CGI budget went to. That right was there. actually that, that was, was decent. Me. That, 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 that was the decent one. That was and, decent. And even her character being like. She was a real person, and but can I just say something? How come her legs were so fucking hairy? I, well, look, I thought we got gypped out of seeing her hoo ha. I think she was. That's fucking... why they, they were implying that her hoo ha was bushy because her legs were like fucking ape man. That's how they were showing the transition from human leg to mannequin. Yeah, but, right, she's Canadian. They don't shave up there. She's a fucking yeah. hobby, okay? okay? No. no, that's not true. Okay. That's, yeah. I, oh, all is, all the Canadians are walking around like Bigfoot that's there, okay? Family. Listen, I'm fucking Sasquatch. Greek and Irish. I'm Greek and Irish, and if I don't shave, that's exactly what my legs look exactly. like. Exactly. <laughs> they also look like Sasquatch. Uh, all right, so maybe, okay. maybe that's why they covered that. My family's Canadian, and they do shave, okay? This right. is the highlight of the movie, by the way, the oh, climax, really? because... This is when you find out that the like director minutes. was basically directing a music video. It's like a very oh, long yeah. movie of <laughs> Marilyn Manson's tourniquet. Oh, like, yeah, you, know what, you know what? Actually, like when I, <laughs> I was first talking to Honor when I got on and I was like, I didn't expect this to be like a glorified Slipknot video. <laughs> <laughs> This is probably the real reason it took six years in between films because they just had to gather all these fucking mannequins from everywhere. Well, yeah, there's a spider mannequin that's all CGI. It starts chasing the, the woman through the back room of the J.C. Penney's. We don't understand what that is. That's not. This is like a real life nightmare for me. My grandmother wore wigs that's and she had these little fucking styrofoam heads and this <laughs> fucked up little <laughs> woman in her house. Oh, no. She would put all her wigs and I had nightmares about that shit as a kid. That's not in the video game, right? I don't believe that spider mannequin ever showed up in any of the video games. I think that was just for the film. I can't say for certain because I haven't played them all, but I haven't seen that yet. My own son betrayed us. Carrie Ann Moss shows up around the 53 minute mark, decked out like one of the elven extras for the Lord of the Rings films. God, she was <laughs> awful. What? Why is she an albino? What the she fuck is that? that? <laughs> the eyebrows. The lack of eyebrows. Uh, First of all, Kit Harrington's supposed to be her son, but clearly this is some demonic bullshit <laughs> going on with her. She looks like a keyboardist in an experimental rock band. Edgar Winter's fucking twin sister. <laughs> I mean, if you don't have any sunlight in this alternate reality, you really should be taking vitamin D as a supplement. Christ. Nothing. <laughs> look fucking... I mean, get, look, get I Trump spray tan folks out. to come around, you know? Well, all the different layers of reality, I guess. Like, maybe she's just related to those two white guys in the Matrix movie. <laughs> oh, that's... Oh, my God, right. that is what she maybe looks that's like. A, <laughs> like a female the version. Ross, the Rasta twins. You're absolutely right. 
Uh, I get. I, she must have been in assault. This she's barely in it, folks. She's in this scene and then at the end scene. This really is it. Into, like, uh, she's the, the one kind of running the deal. When, when, I think when, she had to show up for one day of shooting. No, she just, was like, I have one days. day. That's it. Oh shit. Yeah, she has one day on this film, and we'll talk about her. She, she's the one kind of the run in the show here that wants to get uh, this girl back in Silent Hill so she can knock out this other Alyssa character who's been raising hell and get rid of her. So that's why she's here, and she has she's the one who kidnapped. Sean Bean, and he's being, he's like check shackled up underneath some fucked up statue uh, in this sequence here that we've seen right here. It's uh, like the demonic version of the thinker. Right, but she's not here yet. She's, she's running around escaping the spider, and now she's on her own. Uh, CGI effects only seem to be used as a 3D excuse to throw shit at the camera, be it a vagina mouth or blood splatter, instead of actually immersing the audience in a 3D environment. 58 minute mark. That's what's Do not me. insult vaginas by referring to that fucked up thing that came a, out of the mannequin that's... face as a vagina mouth. <laughs> I guess I got to apologize to vaginas everywhere. Thank uh, you. Honor, if that's what you think a vagina looks like, this may be the key to your dating problem right uh, there. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like, yeah, you know what? It looks like a bear trap. You haven't seen <laughs> uh, Hello, child. Here we go, guys. Veteran actor Malcolm McDowell shows up in chains and gay hooker drag around the one hour mark. Looks like he just walked out of a Burning Man after a week of dropping E and not staying pop- properly hydrated. What the hell is he, he doing? He looks like the High Sparrow. What is wrong with this guy? Literally, this guy does anything for money? At this point, this is just <laughs> one scene. And then he put him in the worst possible outfit. That is actually what happened to his character after Clockwork Orange. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's a line. There's two lines here. He says, I'm looking for my father. That's what she says. And he says, is he lost? That response may be the dumbest line in the film. If you're saying you're looking for his father, obviously she's lost him. Right? No, he's trying to be like Mr. Existentialist. Yeah, I don't like, know. Well, anyway, she's well, he's Mr. This. Multiple Reality Dude. Don't forget. Needs- I don't know. He looks like somebody like a peyote dealer or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah definitely. She has a disc uh, that's a key that she found in a box back at the house uh, full of shit. That, that it's, it's one. But remember, she brought it back from the other dimension. That's how she right. got out of it. Right. And there's another disc, another half to that disc that goes together. And she thinks this guy has the key that's going to have the, to put it together. Well, and Vincent he, told her he had the other hat. Right. And he says, how can I not know the seal of Metatron? Uh, wait, did he say Megatron? That's what it's, I thought. I've yeah, got a whole lot more. In. I turned on the subtitles. It's Metatron. Yeah, yeah it's Metatron. Uh, yeah. Uh, been, if it was Megatron, this would have been awesome. But, no, but it's like, why do they have to be so uh, derivative? Yeah, it's very derivative, but that's uh, no. But can I just say something? The whole thing—it's Metatron. You don't—you don't get the meta reference. The know. grandpa's talking about how there's all these realities within realities oh, within yeah, reality. yeah. Metatron. All right. Well, I I prefer you Megatron. Had. But they're trying to beat you over the head with the meta thing. Frank Welker does not show up in this. Uh, Malcolm McDowell's performance consisted of about five minutes of exposition before he transformed into a burn victim Hulk creature. Uh, who can blame her for not wanting to stick around longer? Because it a- reveals your true self. One scene, guys. He transformed Goodbye. into like a scabby band aid. Yeah, what? Well- <laughs> What is he <laughs> looked terrible? I mean, he looked terrible before he transformed, and he looks terrible after he transformed. Oh, by some... the way, those Sunday. contacts he wore apparently to make him look blind right. apparently actually gave him eye problems. Oh, gee, what a surprise on a twenty million dollar budget when you pissed away. You want to talk to me? Yeah, yeah. Can yeah. you yeah. imagine Irony. actually going blind having acted <laughs> in Silent Hill? Would that suck, Brandon? Would that that's like, terrible. Like that's your legacy. Like you did all this great work, and that's where it cuts off. Uh, yeah, that's... you had your eyes like pried over. Open in one movie and, <laughs> and then went blind in another. another film. Silent Hill <laughs> fucked me up. We gotta uh, put you down like the Mad King. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Malcolm. <laughs> Two halves coming together. It's complete. As if we needed the dialogue to handhold the audience for everything we can clearly see on screen. Hour and four minute mark. She basically puts the other half of the disc is inside the creature. She manages to uh, rip it out of his chest. And put the two halves together into a hole. It just looks like something you get in a uh, you know McDonald's Happy Meal. It's not that big a deal. Faceless nurses sequence at the hour and eight minute mark resembles one of those pretentious live art shows that assholes stand around and critique. Can I uh, give it up to these women uh, who had to like pose in a contortionist thing and hold that shit for hours they were naked. on this set? You know, they had clothes on, but I'm just saying they were in fucked up poses in heels yeah. with some shit all over their face. I mean, you know, from the whoever game. those people were. They from the game? Yes. Okay. All right. When they... And they only react to motion, right? Is that the same so way? So in the first right. one, it was um, it was light, and then in the second <laughs> one, it was uh, sound. So I don't know. Movies or the games? In in the movies. Oh, really? Yeah. So I don't know why they changed that. In the um, in the video game, 
um, as soon as you got close to them, they just went after you. If you had your flashlight on, I think they went after you sooner. So how do you get away from them? Digging. Pro tip. Um. <laughs> 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 so game pro tips right here. And that's just our... a tip. Just, yeah, a tip. Just, just a tip, though, Anthony. Just a tip. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want the whole thing. No, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh no we don't. No, we don't. But go on. What, what's your pro tip? You just got to shoot them. In the in the movies, you just run away constantly. <laughs> that was it. That was the pro tip. You shoot yeah. your <laughs> load up. Well, from the movie, you would never know that. You, from the oh. movie, you'd think you just run all the time. Right. Well, that's true. You are doing a lot of running and a lot of cardio. <laughs> a lot of cardio. Uh, so anyway, the sequence, she, Kit Harrington is brought in for, I don't know what the hell they're going to do with him, but she rescues him from the nurses that uh, now react on sound and not light. Uh, do you think you can save him? Uh, why bother trying to save Sean Bean? Hey, guys, he's Sean Bean. He always ends up dying in films like this one. Fuck. Right? That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Was part of the reason I was okay with this movie pick is like, oh, there are stakes here because I don't know if John Bean, or Sean Bean dies. He doesn't die. He just spends 80% of the production chained to the <laughs> demonic version of the thinker. You know, you know why? Because they were like, hey, we know this dude can't do an American accent. Yeah, we know this guy. Don't let him talk anymore because he's so. Well, they didn't something. want him to ruin this great film. <laughs> right? They were, they were thinking it. about the artistic integrity okay. of the film here. All the accents are pretty bad in this film. I have to say, all Kit Harrington was terrible. In fact, his accent bleeds through a lot. Uh, oh yeah, but well, you know what? Was, yeah, sure, her does too. She, they're all yeah, terrible. You know what? It was Kit's first movie. I don't know. That doesn't that doesn't excuse. No, me. it doesn't. Okay, compared to Sean Beans, who's been in the business. Well, all right, months. that's a good point. Yeah, he should know better. You're right, man. Lakeside Amusement Park consists of some haphazardly or haphazardly place carnival attractions because uh, they sure as hell couldn't afford an entire amusement park on a twenty million dollar budget. The home base for Carrie Ann Moss and Sean Bean, wherever it's trapped, is inside this stupid ass carnival. They call it Lakeside Amusement Park. Is that that's in the game, right? At the end of the first one, you do end up on there. a merry-go-round and fighting a boss. Yeah. Why is it Lakeside Amusement Park? Right. They're in fucking Silent Hill. Now this is just fucking confusing. <laughs> uh, that's the Lakeside. It's, it's the town next. It's the next town over. Uh, no, you're, you're criticizing uh, colonies for not Listen, doing I'm their job. If you're gonna give me some fucked up shit, at least keep to the same fucking town that I'm not supposed to go to. That was the whole crew, Anthony. It was Carnies. That's all they can afford to hire after the budget went. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, see the mask? Uh, they won't breathe the air of the darkness. Uh, they think it corrupts them. Either that or there was a gas leak on set and they decided to keep on shooting. There's another faction of Silent Hill. They're part of the Valerian group that uh, wears masks uh, so they don't breathe. I don't. That doesn't make any fucking but sense. But it doesn't make any sense no, because they're breathing it and then they rip the guy's mask off and in his face mask. Yeah, it doesn't, that doesn't make any sense. That doesn't yeah, make any sense. Yeah, like, like Raiders of the Lost Ark. The shit just starts. It yeah, again, the Ark of the Covenant. Yes. Yeah. I gave you life so you could live my dream. Uh, if you didn't think Adelaide Clemens could, uh, couldn't give a worse performance in a film, wait till she turns up here as her Alyssa counterpart, looking like she just walked out of a goth nightclub. She, no, she could have gone a full, fuck? like, uh, Dawson's Creek alum and gone, no, I don't want your life. No, she went full retard on this, and she's just, it's just absolutely Come terrible. On. Like, I don't know, I don't understand, like, what the direction was at that point. Just act like a complete idiot? <laughs> no, I think it was terrible. Well, I think she, everyone just well, wanted yeah, to I mean, it was... and go home. Was that the game, though? Is that character in the game? Alyssa? Yeah, so, like, Alyssa's the uh, bad boss at the end, but, it, like, I don't know how to make sense of it all. Um, and that's somebody who's played the whole first game and watched these two movies. Yeah, and also you do have a show which deals with this every week. So, like, you've yeah. got you have a, lot of, a lot of cred behind you, and you still don't understand what the hell's going on. We're called Low Score for a reason, yeah, goddammit. <laughs> Uh, hey, uh, Marilyn Manson called. Uh, he'd like his look and his fever dreams back, please. <laughs> that's like the Alyssa character. She went full goth on that one. I think that's, is that make, that's actual makeup, right? It's not. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I just wanted to confirm that. I don't know if and it was CGI. It's black out eye things. Is that CGI? No, they claimed that most of it was actually practical that's effects. That's shit, though. Okay. They, I hate when they, when they No, when they, and by the way, Carrie Ann Moss actually had to shave her eyebrows. Oh, for she this. did not. Oh, beautiful my. Beautiful people. The beautiful people. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the rule of thumb. If you have to make a claim that's all practical, chances are it's not. That's, I love when productions say that. Well, we went out of our way to be practical. But you look at the finished product, and obviously 85% of it is all CGI or just in-camera effects. I mean, yeah. look, look at uh, Jurassic Park, the first one. Like, that was practical effects, yeah. and they did CGI, but that was so long ago, and it looks a thousand times better than this, and this is mm -hmm. recent. It looks a lot better than even Jurassic World, which is what yeah. really... 
It's way yeah. better. Apparently, the most expensive shot in the film was when um, they set Heather on fire at the beginning, the opening sequence. That was all CGI fire, too, and it was really bad. Mm-hmm. Chris, you didn't mention that. What, the fire? Oh, I'm sorry. I lost track of the terrible VFX. <laughs> right. right. Seriously? I just yeah. assumed they were all going to be terrible, so yeah. it's just, you know. And it all is. You're right. Uh, time to get back what I gave to you, uh, which will consist of Clemens mostly hugging herself on a merry-go-round. It should have just been called Silent Hill, Hug Away Your Demons. <laughs> now, if, if she started making out with herself, we might have had a more interesting I mean, film to watch. I think she should have just done the Care Bear stare and then had it. <laughs> See, Critics this is going kumbaya. back to, this is all going back to the Care Bears. Apparently, the, the thing is to join the two characters because they both are related. She, uh, her, her, she hugs them so the two can become one. Because Adelaide Clemens' character represents the only good part of the Alyssa character who's kind of running the show in Silent Hill. She's kind of, And this Valerian group wants to wipe out Alyssa because she's really running the show. We got all this. So they lure Clemens back to do this hug fest on the merry-go-round so the two can become one and we can get rid of Clemens. Why does this always come down to giving oh, birth to some <laughs> form of demon child? Oh, it's always <laughs> I mean, that's just bullshit. I had two kids. I mean, I'm not going to give birth to your fucking demon. Fuck that. I'm not carrying that around for oh. nine months. That's bullshit. Oh, that, it turned into, like, Rosemary's baby. Uh, he cannot go. Well, so now she, she does this, and she frees the, the Valerian group, and she goes to Carrie Ann Moss, who's looking like the, the paled-out Carrie Ann Moss here with the shaved eyebrows, which I didn't realize. Uh, and, of course, now she's not going to renege on this. She's not going to let the father go. He says he cannot go. His blood will feed the newborn god. Uh, he's Sean Bean. He doesn't get off that easy in these films, guys. Duh. Uh, so now I want to see the truth of what you are. Was there anyone really waiting for the MMA smackdown between the pyramid man and the Cenobite at the hour and 20 minute mark? (laughs) (laughs) I know. I I was just like, Oh, Carrie Carrie Ann Moss finishes up her filming by transforming into this Cenobite. Uh, we saw earlier in the elevator and these two guys start fighting and really like, it's like a slow motion dinner theater fight. So the pyramid man doesn't fall off his stilts. Because the guy's on yeah. stilts. He is on stilts. And he's carrying so, a and fucked up sword, man. That thing <laughs> it's too heavy. Well, and important to show some great CGI fake tits. Now, he was a major boss in the game, right, guys? Did you yeah, he that? was supposed to be a bad guy, but because he was such a fan favorite, right. they couldn't kill him off, and then they, like, fucking turned him into a good guy, which was really? total bullshit. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Did you fight him in the first one? In the game? Yeah, yeah, you did, but you never killed him. Oh, really? Sounds lame. He's a uh, bad guy, but you... Yeah, but now he's a good guy. Okay, whatever. He's the protector. He's, yeah, he's, he's the, the yeah, he does end up killing uh, uh, the Cenobite version of Carrion Moss. And so, no, it's not really a happy ending. Uh, Sean Bean says, I can't leave. Of course you can't. You're Sean Bean, stupid. Sean Bean got to eat. <laughs> but can I just say something? If she's really like the good part and she absorbed the bad part, right. shouldn't it turn into fucking rainbows and moonbeams no, 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 and like all yet. kinds of... Not yet, not yet. It doesn't make sense. Like, Alyssa's supposed to be the bad guy and Sharon who is known as Cheryl in the video game, is supposed to be the good guy, uh, the good version, the one that can love, right? And then she's, like, right. bitching at students and stuff in school. It's like, wow, like, that's the love side? That's a little harsh, if you ask me. <laughs> it's it's yeah. emo love. Damn, Sean Bean survived to the end of the running time. I just lost money. <laughs> I'll just take yeah, my well, best. Well, he... he... <laughs> But he does, he, does he live or not? Does he, I guess he kind of lives. I, mean, no, I don't fuck know. That. Can... Oh, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, if no one's going to kill me, I'm fucking doing myself out. Like, Guys, this... <laughs> why don't they make a Sean Bean video game where your whole objective is just to kill Sean Bean over and over? For but see, what I don't understand. <laughs> an awesome game. Like what the one. What pisses me off <laughs> about the whole thing. <laughs> what pisses me off about the whole thing, it's just the fucking carry ending over again. It is. So they walk out, the ash is gone, Sean Beam gets sucked up by the fog, and they're walking away, and then they get in the truck, and then they're oh, driving the away, and then the fucking police are going in, and all of a sudden it's all fucked up again. But how could it be fucked up if Aless is not evil anymore? Yeah, they run exactly. out of town, and they, they bum a ride from this trucker, and they, and they, trucker, they say to the trucker, take, just take me as far away from here as you can. Phil Manns with a John Snow and Clemens bumming a ride from a trucker, which I just mentioned. But would have been more poignant if they played the Incredible Hulk sad piano theme over the sound. Oh, <laughs> Wouldn't that be awesome? I looked that up because I was like, okay, there has to be some significance with that driver. And what is it? I thought he was going to be the protector guy. Like, that was his true self. Well, apparently he's a prequel character. He is? Yeah. The truck. Remember he says, I haven't come this way in a long time. Right, uh, right. Oh, guy says, he in the game? 
He's setting wow, up. he wasn't in the first one that I know of, no. No, he was in um, Sil- Silent Hill Origins, a prequel game. Oh, I didn't need gotcha. to. Gotcha. All right. Okay, that's but like the that's fifth like, one in the series, basically. But that's like so pointless to make it yeah, that obscure. Do that? It's just setting that it up I for another movie. I had to look it up because I, like, I was like, okay, maybe I just don't get it because I haven't played the game. Even the video game experts didn't get that. What the hell, man? I have to <laughs> right. rewound the end. You guys had one job. Like, <laughs> yeah, you so, really think, dropped the ball by expecting us to be. Like, yeah, I guess I guess we did. I, we'll just cut the episode down. It'll be, like, <laughs> it'll be 50 minutes long, and I'll be, you guys will just say four things. Don't worry about it. Uh, <laughs> I rewound the end about three times. Why? So like, you I, didn't get enough, I, did you? Because I didn't get it. I was like, what am I missing? There's a sign. That my last note is is the sign that says, "You are leaving Silent Hill," and I wrote, "Thank God." Like I don't think I don't think I ever want to visit this fucking town again, or the movies, or the video games. <laughs> I swear to God, I looked up at that shot where it said, "You are now leaving Silent Hill," and at first I thought it said, "You are never leaving Silent oh. Hill." But can I just say it's such a ripoff of like Twin Peaks that shot. Even to rewind a second, like when the when the grandpa turns into demon, you know, scab. He says it's in me. I mean, that's like so rip off of the fifth element. I mean, this movie ripped off so many movies. Oh, it's, it's not really it's not even originally horrible. Anthony, you got you're you're a fan of survival horror, right? Yeah, I'm the only one who can stomach playing it, if you and want to what, put it that what, way. Where does this fall? Not the movie, but where's the where does that game fall in your kind of ranking? It's tough. I mean, really the the only two that you can really choose from, I guess, is uh Resident Evil and Silent Hill, and Death? I think Resident Evil well, was just side. easier to play. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. You're saying control-wise, like just control-wise with the game? Control, um, or... Once you get to uh, Resident Evil 4, it's uh, uh, it's like a real game. It's not the tank controls. Yeah, yeah. So, so, yeah, yeah, it is tank, yeah. Is this still a viable franchise now in 2016? Or no? um, I think the last one that they made may have been just like a year ago or more. I mean, it's not uh, it's that down. old. Well, you guys, I know you guys live in the 90s with all your shit that you're buying at flea market. Stuff. <laughs> I, mean, I, I know that's kind of where your headspace is. There's nothing wrong with that. No, no, no. I'm saying I'm just saying that's where they're that's where they're reviewing, not the new stuff um, now, which is all garbage. A lot of it's garbage anyway. Um, yeah. Transactions, all this other shit. I just didn't know. I just didn't know like if we're gonna see another fucking sequel. I just I think I hope oh, we're done. not. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> No, you two guys. No, we're definitely not going to do another one. I'm. I'm just wondering if we're going to be subjected like there's going to be another Silent Hill film down the line, uh, six years from it. now. It's going to be another six years, and oh, don't on. worry, they're not using that time to write the script. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. it's not going to let you. Oh, no, they're not. Now it'll be written about six weeks before they start shooting. Yeah, uh, exactly. And we'll have oh, Sean Bean in it. I did watch the credits. So. Oh, and anything good? The little protector guy is there at the end, still yes? dragging his sword around. And oh, that's, it. that's it? That was the last? Yep. Oh, what is that? That He's got to get a lighter weapon. That thing... I know, right? Yeah. I told you, he's no, the he... fan favorite. I don't know why everyone no. loves him. Oh, so. no, he's he's speaking fucking... of CrossFit, that dude needs to like, <laughs> that... get a different program. Yeah. Holy shit. Because... All right, so there you go, folks. That is uh, Silent Hill Revelation in 3D. Uh, for this week, we took it out and played with it a lot longer. We should have. Could we flush it, ladies and gentlemen? Could we please, please flush it? I don't think it's going to go down the toilet. Like, it's one of those big turds that you kind of got to break apart. <laughs> you got to get like a stick. Oh, oh, consider it, consider it flush. Thank you, gentlemen. That's it for this week. I want to thank my lovely co cinematic flushers, uh, Midwest Movie Colleen Griffin, and Raging Woodaby Moon Queen Norcrest. Great job, as always, ladies. Thank our very special guest. From the Torture Vision Low Score Show, Brendan Hayes and Anthony Adiner. Gentlemen, you did a great job tonight. Thank you so much for sitting in and flushing this awful, awful film with us. We cool. really Thanks appreciate it. Us. Oh, absolutely. We hope you come back. Light some incense in here before we come back again. It, it's fucking uh, I've seen trucker stations look cleaner than this. And we'll be back to torture you guys with something else uh, next week. Uh, until then, say goodbye, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, bye bye. Thank you for having us. Oh, man, that was a weak ass ending. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Who the hell oh, booked you? Who booked you guys? Hey, this is Nora Crest, and I want to thank you for listening this week and every week as we flush these turds down our cinematic bowl here in the restroom. If you haven't already, please subscribe to us on iTunes and Google Play Music so you don't miss a single episode. You can also follow us on Twitter and use hashtag Pottern Family, or like us on Facebook, circle us up on Google+, and check out all of our episodes at our home restroom on the net, signalsoffury.com. Until next time, remember... We're here to flush it so you don't have to see it. I'm Nora Crest, and this has been the award-winning Soiled Restroom Cinema.